Ties come in a variety of colors, patterns, and textures. And no matter your age or profession, ties provide you with an opportunity to stand out in the crowd. So whether you're dressing for work or a special occasion, a skillfully knotted tie will allow you to make a lasting impression. Oscar Wilde once said that a well-tied tie is the first serious step in life, and he was right. On more than one occasion, I've attended meetings where the speaker stepped up to the podium with a crooked tie, or worse yet, a carelessly knotted tie. Naturally, my eyes went directly to his neck, concentrating initially on his tie rather than his presentation. And much like women will use a pin or a scarf to accessorize their outfit, you should look at your tie as an artistic accessory. More importantly, consider your choice in knots as the final piece to your wardrobe. After all, you choose a tie to accent your wardrobe, make sure you accent your tie with the proper knot. There are five different tie styles making up the foundation of today's fashion, so let's get started. They are the four in hand, the Windsor, the half Windsor, the Shelby, and the bow tie. Now don't laugh. Although it isn't overly popular right now, the bow tie definitely makes a bold statement. Now not everyone has the proper build or personality to wear the bow tie, but you do take notice of the person wearing one, right? Well, we'll get to this in a moment, but first, we'll cover one of the more popular knot styles using a contemporary style tie, the four in hand, also known as the simple knot. The four in hand knot is the smallest and most precise of knots, dating back to the days of the coach and four in England, when the coachman would tie their ties using this method to prevent them from flying in the wind while they were driving the team. Okay, let's start with the basics. Begin by draping the necktie around the collar with the seam lying along the collar facing in. The white end of the tie should be on the side of your dominant hand. If you're right-handed, then start on the right. First, let's walk through the steps of the four in hand. Start with the wide end of the tie on your right and extending a foot below the narrow end. Cross the wide end over the narrow end and back underneath. Continue around, passing the wide end across the front of the narrow end once more. Pass the wide end up through the loop between the knot and your neck. Pass the wide end down through the knot in front. Draw the knot up tight to your collar by holding the narrow end of the tie and sliding the knot snug. Now let's walk through the four in hand again. Turn up the collar and button it at the neck. This allows the necktie to glide gently along the collar without wrinkling or stretching the fabric. Begin with the white end of the tie on the side of your dominant hand and extending about a foot below the narrow end. Notice that on most ties, a diagonal seam is about midway on the tie. This is usually a good gauge as to where to make your first cross. Cross the white end of the tie over the narrow end and back underneath. Bring the white end over the front and then pass it up between the neck and the knot, holding the loop open with your left finger. Pass the white end down through the knot and notice that by tucking the loop through with your index finger of the right hand, this allows you to maintain the knot while you pull the material through. And this goes for all knots. Shape your knot and draw it up tight. Turn down the collar. And there you have a nice, clean four in hand. Next, we'll help you master the half Windsor. Now pay close attention because I'm about to reveal a new twist to the traditional directions. Why is this necessary? Well, the half Windsor has always appeared to be a little lopsided, until now. Start with the wide end of the tie on your right and extending a foot below the narrow end. Cross the wide end over the narrow end and wrap it back underneath. Bring the wide end up towards your face and turn down through the loop to your right, not your left. This is the new twist. Traditional directions say to go to your left. However, we found that bringing the wide end to your right results in a more symmetrical knot. This allows you to pass the wide end around the front from your right to left. Then, go up between your neck and the knot and down through the knot in front Tighten carefully and draw up to the collar to complete the new and improved half Windsor. Now if you've ever had problems getting your finished tie to hang to the proper length, here's a little trick. 
Start by letting the wide end hang to twice the length as the narrow end. To check if you've done this properly, draw the wide end up to the edge of the neck. The length of the doubled end should be equal in length to that of the narrow end. Now you'll want to experiment with any new tie though, because there are a number of variables that affect the length of the final tie. The thickness of the material and the length of the tie itself. The thickness of the neck and the length of the torso. Also, knot styles require differing lengths of material, so you'll want to vary the point at which you make your first cross. Now let's step through the half Windsor once more. The wide end of the tie should be on the side of your dominant hand and extending at least a foot below the narrow end. Cross the wide end over the narrow end and back underneath. Bring the broad end up towards you and then down through the loop between your neck and the knot and sweep the wide end to the right this time, not to the left. This is the new twist. This allows you to bring the broad end from the right across the front to the left and then bring the broad end up between your neck and the knot Pass it down through the loop, draw your material, and then draw it up tight. And there you have a half Windsor. See how even the two sides are? I should point out that after being tied, the tips of the necktie should touch the waistband of the pants, and the two ends of the tie should either be equal in length or the narrow end a fraction shorter. Remember, the inside of the wide end of the tie has a band into which the narrow end of the tie is tucked to hold it in place. The Windsor. If not done properly, this knot can come out looking very large, bulbous, and unsightly. So pay special attention on this one. It's worth the extra effort. Start with the wide end of the tie on your right and extending a foot below the narrow end. Cross the wide end over the narrow end and bring it up through.